Okay, cool. Right, hi folks. Um, hijacking. This is very much a boff. I'll reiterate what I've said in other sessions. This is not where something where I'm going to tell everybody what I think should happen. This is a session I think we should be having for the sake of having a discussion. So please speak up. Uh, especially there's going to be a whole load of people who are not, not going to be here, but I'm hoping are going to be in IRC. If people can relay questions as well. We've also, as you can see, we've got a Gobby document. Please, somebody or multiple people take notes. Um, I'm hoping we can get some useful discussion here and not just have a flame war. Let's see how it goes. So, as I'm guessing a number of people have noticed, we've had several um, heated discussions um, on Debian Devel and elsewhere in the last few months about the topic of hijacking. Whether you describe it as hijacking or aggressive NMUing or orphaning and taking over packages, uh, there's, there's a whole continuum of describing basically taking over maintenance of a package from an existing maintainer. Um, is that ever right? Is it ever something we should do? I've seen some people suggest no, not at all, ever, no way, 100%. Uh, I've seen other people saying, yeah, fine, go for it. Um, so what do we mean by hijacking? You know, do we take a package, is it acceptable to take a package if a maintainer is basically missing in action? If they haven't been around for five years and, you know, males of them get, never get responses? Is it okay if you think that a package is unmaintained? Has it not been uploaded for three years or so? Is it okay if a package is badly maintained and it's RC buggy as hell and the maintainer isn't doing anything? Is it okay to take over a package if the maintainer isn't doing something that matches what you want? Um, is it okay if the technical committee say it's okay? Um, what do we think? Anyone? Ian? Um, I think sometimes people use the word hijack to mean, to, to include situations where the maintainer seems to be absent or anyway isn't resisting. Um, I'm not sure that that's, that's quite the best way to define the problem. The problem comes, surely, when the existing maintainer or maintainers are clearly unwilling rather than just not cooperating or, or failing to exist entirely. Um, and exactly what to do about that situation is something that we have struggled with for a long time. I don't have any good answers. Salvage, he's suggesting for a situation for um, where the maintainer is, is just not apparently there. Yeah, that sounds fair. Um, as a reminder, too, uh, there are some situations that in which uh, the maintainer himself is not necessarily MIA, but is effectively MIA for some packages. And um, I personally think that waiting for a maintainer to be fully MIA on 100% of his packages might be too late sure. when some packages need help before that. Mm. And it's perfectly perfectly reasonable for one to have lost interest in parts of the archive or his packages somewhere. And we currently lack a clear way to just take over packages, uh, take away packages from a maintain. I don't think we entirely lack a clear way to make take away maintainers, packa maintainers from a package. There is the QA orphaning process, which I have done to a few packages, where you file a bug saying, this package appears not to be maintained, I propose orphaning it, and s three months later, orphan it. Um, that's a really long wait. If no one replies to the bug, I don't see what possible harm it could have. Yeah, I've just noticed that. Yeah. Right, that's almost what I was getting on with when if, if the maintainer is absent. In that sense, that's not, it's certainly not controversial, and you can see that it's not controversial because by definition, there's nobody who's opposing it. The, the question is, under what circumstances should we um, grasp the package and force it out of the ma existing maintainer's death grip? Um, and 
historically, Debian has had a very strong maintainer culture, um, but we seem to be moving away from that. There's also the difficulty that our nominal system for taking packages away from maintainers is the technical committee who have never done that. And frankly, I don't think they are very likely, likely to in the future. Mm. So um, maybe we, you know, it, it can't possibly be right that no package in Debian has ever been wrestled away from an unwilling maintainer. There must have been cases where that was the right thing to do. Mm. We obviously lack a way to do it and a, an idea of when that should happen and who should decide. Sure. I mean, it's clearly an emotive topic. Um, I mean, it's one of the strengths of Debian that I see is that we allow maintainers control over their packages. It's one of the ways that Debian scales well, that we don't have to have group discussions over everything that we do. But it's also one of our weaknesses that, you know, there are a number of maintainers that I've seen who are very territorial about their packages and don't want to accept help. There are people out there who will respond very aggressively if you ever deign to NMU their package for an RC bug, for example, um, which is unfortunate. You know, we're trying to work together as a team to produce the best operating system we can. Um, so, okay, Ian, you know, has pointed out that the technical committee have never, have never handed over maintenance of a package. Um, do we think that's correct? Should we explicitly ask the tech committee to, to, to step in in these situations? Should we have another mechanism? Anyone? Yeah. Um, other, when I said we don't have a proper procedure, I think it's right that we have some guidelines or mm. it's somehow widely known that we should go to Debian Devil with some delay, something like that. Yeah. Maybe having a multiple steps written down in developer's reference saying, if you think a package is outdated too much or that it should change maintainer, this is the pure procedure you should follow. Step one, send that type of mail, wait that amount of days, and step two, go to Debian Devil with that type of mail, with that, that amount of days, etc., and then everybody is aware of what the procedure is, in which step we are for which package, and then it's also mm. more clear. I, I don't know, just sort of throwing yeah. out the idea. I mean, what people have said so far um, about going through the QA process and checking on things and orphaning a package if the maintainer doesn't seem to be around. I mean, of course, the weird thing about that is um, it's not like there is a defined QA team. Every developer is a member of QA when they, f you know, wh when they feel like. So it, it's, if we go for that way as a method, then yeah, you could just say, right, as a member of QA, I'm saying this, this package is orphaned, and then potentially 10 minutes later say, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this package, which clearly is not within the spirit, but you know, technically is correct from, from what p some people have suggested. I think that document uh, the process if you are willing to hijack the package or if you are noticing something, you can go directly to the, uh, to the missing in action database and document the process by mm -hmm. yourself. I mean, it's public and you just need to read it and, sure. and, and, and put a tag for it. And that way, mm -hmm. uh, the maintainer will be also keep on the missing in action thing rather. So we seem to have focused on packages that are effectively orphaned. I think, Steve, you were also talking about packages that are maintained, but maintained possibly in a bad way. Yeah. Um, well, ish. I'm, I'm, I'm looking to stimulate discussion about all of these, th these places. Um, I mean, there was a particular example that we've had recently, um, and I don't wish to pick on individual people, but I've got, I'm going to pick an example of the wine packages where we've had a maintainer who doesn't have the time to do the maintenance yet still wants the maintenance to happen in, in the way that they want. Um, while I understand, obviously, let's be honest, Debian is full of people with strong technical opinions who are always going to want things their own way. Um, the also, for my, in my opinion, there should always be a time when, well, look, if you're not doing the work, you don't get to dictate how it's done. 
you know, again, you know, it, it works that way, of course, that when you are doing the work, you get to dictate it. At what point do we say, actually, no, here's a cutoff, you've gone too far? So I'd like to agree with, with what you just said there and suggest to Steve that we should try to narrow the scope of this BOF to situations where there is an existing maintainer and they are actively resisting the package to transfer to a new maintainer, even if that only mm. means that they're answering emails saying no. Yeah. Um, in the other situation, it's not controversial. We already have processes that deal with that. They may or may not be too fast or too slow, but that's, that's not the really difficult question. We solve the... I, th I think the, the bad problem we have is we, we don't have a good answer to the difficult question of when is somebody not being a good enough maintainer. Mm. Does anybody have any ideas about how, well firstly, how badly maintained a package has to be before you want to depose an unwilling maintainer and secondly, who should be making that decision? Neil. It has to have some kind of context of the package itself and its role within Debian. If you're talking about a leaf package that only uh, a small number of people use, then so if you're talking about um, changing the maintainer of one of the base packages or of something involved in the tool chain, you've got to have a much wider approval for that. How do we bring the type of package into the equation as well? It's not just about how actively the existing maintainer fights. It's also about how important is that package and proper maintenance of that package to the wider project. Yep. Can we come up with a reasonable set of guidelines over, you know, to, to, to give us help, you know, to give us a process? You know, should we, should we have to wait for five other Debian developers to complain that this package is, is clearly not being maintained well enough? Should it be 10? Is that a valid thing to, to count? You know, should we say, you know, that this package is X releases behind upstream as well? Should we say, you know, does it have this many RC bugs? Um, I mean, in some cases, there may not be RC bugs, but a package is clearly not being maintained adequately. It's a difficult one to call. What do we think? Okay, I'm seeing half of the room not saying anything at all. Is email important? <laughs> Neil, to the Neil. One of the things that we've been considering for, for a, a number of releases is essentially uh, blocking and removing from testing at freeze time any orphaned packages. Um, because if there isn't a maintainer, then, then that's just going to create a problem. Um, sure, I've seen that. Essentially, treating orphan, you know, being orphaned as an RC bug. Yeah, um, it would be interesting to get a view on if people would like the release team to take other factors into account on what we should do around releases, including maintainership. Mm. I'm quite keen not to have the release team essentially deciding who should be maintainers of packages or, 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 or directing maintainers to do stuff in that way. You mean peop you, know, you don't have enough people hating you already? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Um, <laughs> but it, w it would be useful to get some feedback if there's something they want to say the release team to do at mm. for specifically for release time. That doesn't help Unstable, which we yeah. try not to touch as much as possible, but um, th that might be a, another thing which you might be able to look at as well. Sure. Uh, well, um, one of the thi I mean, the thing that Neil just said there about the release team not wanting to decide who's the maintainer of a package, I think that's sort of hitting the nail on the head there, really, because nobody wants to be making these decisions apart from the person who wants to take over the package. And everybody yep. else is just going, oh, my God, God. please, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and the effect of that is that really very bad situations of the maintainership of a package can go on for a very long time. And 
everybody gets really embittered and nobody is willing to make a decision. Uh, and the result is eventually maybe somebody gets beaten down and walks mm. away from the package or maybe they don't. And that's not really, that's, that's kind sure. of war by attrition and not yeah. the or best way to do things. Or maybe they bounce it to the tech committee who then only get, only get it once it's already a flame war. If, if it gets to that point, then generally the, the maintainer who loses out will often lose, um, often resign from Debian entirely. Yeah. If it gets Exa to that, that sure. level of animosity. Mm -hmm. As I said earlier, it, it's, an, it's an emotive decision. People really do f feel strongly about this. I mean, actually, we have the low threshold NMU page already to show for those people who are happy to accept help on their packages. Quick show of hand. Right, how many people here maintain Debian packages? <laughs> right, take, right, leave your hands up if you're not in the low threshold NMU page. Okay, next question is obvious, why not? <laughs> Adam's just said he's not there because he's never been bothered to go and do it yet. Um, Ian. Um, I, I, prefer hmm. I prefer, you know, there, there are certain mistakes that people can make with my packages and I would prefer them to ask me in advance. And I, every time anybody has emailed me saying, I propose to do this NMU, I have replied very promptly, in general, yes, sometimes, yes, but watch out for this. Okay, cool. Neil. Hang on a second. Uh, just a quick uh, point. Perhaps we should give people one hijack that they could, they're allowed to do, and <laughs> then it get rid of, no, no, well, at the moment, everybody's allowed to hijack as much as everybody else, yeah? So you get to do one hijack if you really, uh, under all the same circumstances, but you're only allowed to do it once. And then the, whether it was a success gets reviewed at some point, and you're never allowed to do it again if it was If you a did it wrong. And, uh, <laughs> so people have this sort of token that they value, and they're not going to waste it on just mucking about. So they take even more responsibility about, and then it gets reviewed, and afterwards, yeah, fair enough, you can have your token back. Okay, Bill. cute idea. Who reviews it? Also I think the, the court of public <laughs> opinion will have decided at some point later whether it was a good idea or not. Phil, also what happens with that if you've actually got a hijack that involves uh, a, a chain of packages? You've got to take over two or three and it becomes uh, a number of packages that all form mm. one hijack then? or Because or, you know, sometimes you actually need Maybe to take over... Maybe you need friends. <laughs> 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 oh, it's clearly doomed to failure then. <laughs> well, that's... That's which would mean an instant team packaging thing, which yes. would probably be better than the previous situation. That's one of, yeah. the, one of the reasons why I'm not on the low threshold NMU, is actually I've got uh, 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 the vast majority of the packages are already team maintained. Uh, and if one of the team doesn't get back to them, then that's a problem with the team, and we need to sort that out. Mm, I'm on the low threshold NMU page, but also with comments, I mean, that. Uh, if it's team maintained, go there first. And I mean, it's also protected by the fact that normally enemies mean that you fix a bug and this bug has not been answered. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, all, it's mostly for the case where I'm a away for some reason or just out of internet for some time and that it's better to have maintained packages than just me maintain, maintaining my packages. But I mean, that's personal. Yeah, agreed. It's related. It's not key to the problem that we're trying to solve here. Um... And I see, yes, we're talking about RC buggy pa packages where a bug is closed without comment on the bug, for example. I'm not going to go looking at the bug number. <laughs> um, I mean, let's not, I've already done it myself, let's not pick partic on particular maintainers, particular packages here. You know, there are lots of examples out there. I'm sure we're all aware of that. Um, quick show of hands as a metric. Should it just be done with release critical bugs? Yes, no, hands up for yes. Okay, should we just dis describe that, uh, say that a bug, sh that a, sorry, that a package should be hijacked solely if it has release critical bugs that are not fixed? I see two hands out of a room of 20 odd. Um, should it depend on, 
Yeah, sorry. That packet question was really ambiguous. Yes, thank you, Phil. Um, should, should we define whether or not a, a package should, uh, is, is available for hijacking depending on whether or not you know, it's, it's behind upstream releases? No. Should, you know... Yeah, and we're not frozen, yes. Right, Vince? Um, currently, if you're behind upstream, you just get a wish list bug, yes? Yeah. Or, um, do we want to look at perhaps, say, using a metric to go, if you are 20 releases behind, or pick a number <laughs> of mm. releases behind uh, mainline, then that bug becomes RC, and therefore you can just do NMUs use against the package. Yeah, maybe. Or rather than say 20 releases, say, is it a year behind, or, or that kind of thing, yeah. It, it might be reminded that um, NMUs can be done for wishlist wish list bugs. I mean, the developer reference explicitly does not, does not say that you cannot do it. So you can do it given reasonable explanation mm. and time. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Who defines what's reasonable? <laughs> Neil? <laughs> So a quick uh, comment about the RC-ness of um, new upstream version bugs. If there's something that's sufficiently behind, um, then that it's like really, really out of date, then just talk to the release team, and if we think it's reasonable, well, if I think it's reasonable, I'll just make it RC. That, that's mm. probably the easiest way of doing that. Um, I I in general, I think each one of these are, are indications of a package being unmaintained rather than a stopgap entry of, of things we should do for, for, for each of them. So certainly a combination, again, it's a, a fuzzy logic, human yeah. potentially thing that has to be done. You can write things that might find candidates for this. Um, but in, in the end, I think it, it's something that the project mm -hmm. and people as a whole have to say, uh, that one there, in my judgment, is unmaintained. That one isn't. Yeah. And trying to get some criteria for, for that fuzziness is, is sure. NP hard. Well, quite. I know someone in this room has c came up with not that long ago his own um, equation for describing how badly maintained a package is, didn't you, Neil? <laughs> um, would it be helpful to actually have an even semi-official um, check on every package? So the QA team, uh, I think Lucas implemented this. There's a package called Bypass, no, not a package, a page called Bypass, and it's basically about packages that are poorly maintained using various metrics. Okay. So I'm, I'm it's very tempting, isn't it, to mm. think we could only come up with some kind of formula, some kind of objective criterion, then none of us would have to make these difficult decisions. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's really what's going on here. <laughs> But it's a difficult decision, and if we have these kind of criteria, you can guarantee that people will game them. Yes. And there will be arguments over whether something's release critical. The things that we put on the list for you might be hijacked if you don't do them will get mm -hmm. done, and everything else will be left alone. Sure. All of these things will go wrong. We what will we end need, up with rules lawyering. What we need is a way to use the existing social mechanisms that we have and somehow get enough weight of opinion behind a decision without getting the whole thing into a nightmarish flame war on the way there. And how do we do that? <laughs> well, it's almost like we need a low hijack page where you say that I'm okay to be hijacked. <laughs> <laughs> And like, oh. it almost feels like I want to file an email to whatever PTS such that on my package page uh, it gets that little nice box saying low NMU if you want to just do one fix or low hijack if you want to continue maintaining it. Sure. Good luck. <laughs> but how, I mean, uh, the RFA tag is, is already some part of the way though, isn't it? To no, say no, no, I don't want to <laughs> orphan it or mm. request for adoption because, you know, I'm still maintaining it, mm. but if I fall out of the earth, go ahead and hijack it. Yeah, that's, that's fair. If you have better agenda or mm. whatever. 
But I suppose, of course, the only people who are ever going to sign up for that are the well-behaved maintainers. It, it well, <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, I'm like you know, if I put that up, I wonder if anyone will ever hijack my package because mm. I don't think so because I'm like leaf and unimportant. <laughs> sure. Oh, Martin. Um, I think that uh, the idea of having this kind of formula is quite interesting. Uh, maybe adding some kind of uh, more subjective data and not making it uh, um, authoritative, but maybe an indication would be useful. Mm. Because maybe you don't know that your package is so bad, but other, pe other people think, <coughs> think so. And maybe as a repository for uh, packages that need help, and maybe some something less drastic that just saying hijack, but maybe offer help or whatever. It could be a nice way to help uh, to get the social fix done. I mean, a technical aid for a social problem. Right? Yeah. Mm. Pass it back to Hector. Uh, about the question, the who maintains a package, I think uh, teams, teams should take preference over uh, an individuals. I like the idea of teams maintaining packages. Of course, then the, the teams have to organize themselves on who leads that team and who has to make mm. the, the important decisions and that was one thing and I have hijacked a few packages and I have filed a wish list bugs to, up, uh, to update the packages to mm. newer release to newer releases upstream releases uh, the maintainer haven't replied I've been working with upstream trying to fix bugs in, a, in, in these packages and after a year waiting for a reply from the maintainer I just changed the maintainer upload and there mm. was no complaint at all. I mean, the, those guys were lost. Sure, so you've hijacked and you've got away with it. Well, no, nobody's, well, it's, it's how I'd describe it. You know, the, main, the existing maintainer hasn't complained, but have salvaged been, it. sorry, salvaged, yes. I mean, I, 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 it's in the bug report and I really yeah. explicit that I was intent to, to hijack the package. Mm. And I, I, I mean, I give yeah. like a year sure. time, so. Yeah, I mean, again, um, but you, you talk about teams too. Teams are typically better, but not always. Um, I've seen some packages maintained in, where, where the, the maintenance has been switched to a team and the team has been essentially one person. Or even worse, you end up with a, with a team maintaining a package and actually if you look at the team, there's only one person really active. Um, or the other, the other problem, there's three people potentially active, but when they get a really hard bug, they all sit back and hope that somebody else is going to deal with it. <laughs> We've all been there, surely. Maybe to put some light or so, I have also been or uh, hijacking or salvaging packages, and the way I did it is I sent a mail to Debian Devils uh, saying and CCing, expli explicitly uh, CCing the maintainer saying, I intend to uh, hijack this package, and I, I intend to do this in one month's time. Please, anyone, including the existing maintainer, raise mm -hmm. a hand. And I got zero answer, so sure. I just went away. And I think if we codify something like that in a, some sort of procedure to hijack, I mean, that's quite sane because we raise the red flag publicly before doing it with a reasonable time frame. I mean, one month is reasonable for almost anyone. And then it's also on a public place where anyone can comment. And if no one comments, then we just go ahead. Sure, that sounds very reasonable. I mean, it, so intent to hijack a month? It, well, so... <laughs> Salvage, definitely. What, at what point does it switch over from, from a former so, so hijack to a salvage? This is, the, this is a very important... Well, I think we need to be, concentrate on this distinction between yes. salvaging and hijacking. Salvaging occurs when the original maintainer is not resisting. Hijacking occurs when the original maintainer is resisting, even if that resistance consists only of sending emails saying no. Correct. Right? And this is yeah. a perfectly clear distinction. And this means that you can basically always get away with salvaging because nobody is going to object. Yes. And that's the basic way this has been going on. And I don't think that's even... Well, the idea of doing that as a rule isn't controversial either. Correct. The difficult question is hijacking. Yeah. I think that's a good point, Ian. Um, but doesn't policy currently forbid hijacking? The way it's Some people seem to think so. All ah, right, because I've been told that repeatedly. So perhaps it would be so, as a, something, a, an action from this meeting to actually put in the 
premise of salvage into policy as, yeah. a, as an actual action, actionable thing, so it's clear in mm. the policy document. So when this kind of thing comes along... Well later, volunteered. We, we've actually got something to do. I didn't just volunteer. Did you I? just oh, did, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right. So maybe we could just do a difference between salvaging and hijacking with salvaging being like between common sense human humans and with no resistance and then if there's re resistance refer that to whatever probably technical committee because there's a disagreement on some technical question mm. which is maintainership so okay um, so I was very interested in, in, Steve had this crazy suggestion of the, the, the sort of magic hijack token. No, well, Phil did. Yes. Well, I thought that was really interesting. Um, something like that might actually work um, on the grounds that it doesn't depend so much on having to persuade some other bunch of people who haven't been involved in the previous history of the package that there's a problem and making a huge public flame war over it. Um, another possibility is that the technical committee might be somehow encouraged to take a more active role in this. Now, at the moment, the technical committee Maybe is... Um, that would be... Uh, Phil suggests, yes, maybe the technical committee should give out the tokens. That would be a possibility. Or it could decide to restore the tokens afterwards. No, I mean, you don't Oh, interesting <laughs> idea. Now, all of these things are, are possibilities. Now, interestingly, the technical committee is currently in the process of work of, of st we're going to start a number of GRs, um, mostly kind of constitutional bug fixes. But one of them is a thing that I invented, which is a piece of advice from the developers to the TC saying, we would like you to be more or less aggressive. Yeah. And that kind of thing will be very influential with the technical committee. And if, you know, I would encourage everybody to participate in that discussion. And um, if you think that the technical committee should be more willing to hand over packages away from existing maintainers, then um, that's something that we need to know about. Do we have any questions from IRC at all? Is anyone following? No, okay. <laughs> no, actually, th I think going through with that, it sounds like a re reasonable place. Maybe the, the technical committee would be the right body to give people back their tokens after they've been used. That sounds like, like a good way to go. The, the only comment from IRC is that the people think that WNPP is easy to miss. So... Mm. It's listed on the PTS, it's listed in various other places. You get but reminder emails now sure. again. So that's, it's, it's interesting to see why people think that. Mm. And maybe we need to publish that more again and say, when we're going through this, and actually of course, the results yeah. of this. The downside of the WNPP, of course, is that um, the bugs don't actually appear on the, the package's own bug listing page that I'm aware of. And it would be much, much nicer if they did, maybe, I guess. We have a solution for that, Steve. We yeah. We have the effects um, yes. control message that you can use to mm. make that happen. Sure. I mean, would it be useful actually just to to add an extra extra piece of code on a you know the BTS is clearly easy to hack on, you know to <laughs> you know to add specifically any RFAs, orphans, whatever request for helps into the bug listing for the package itself and not just in the WNPP bug listing. Maybe. Just a thought. So we have what sounds like a reasonable solution for salvaging. Um, how long should we leave a package before we consider it that it's in need of salvage? Sorry, Steve. <coughs> wanted to yes. say something about the WNPP bugs. Maybe it's a good idea to start moving the, all the uh, 
request for help, uh, request for adoption, whatever mm. bugs into the package itself instead of WMPP and use user tags to find them and stuff like that instead of collecting everything in WMPP? Yeah, maybe. Please, I hope people are taking notes on all this. So, salvaging. How long should we leave something? Um, just a question about salvaging. If a package is removed from testing or a package is removed from SID and you reintroduce it, that's salvaging and you fix all the bugs and make it transition and that's fine. Yeah. Without any wait periods before we start discussing wait periods. Maybe. Again, it's really quite, quite easy to get something removed. Believe me, I've done it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you then immediately upload, there's nothing stopping you basically hijacking any package that way. And again, that, that isn't salvaging. <laughs> you know, should we wait for the bit to the, for there to be an RC bug open for a month? Should we wait for it clearly to be not to be not maintained? But how do we sell it clearly not maintained? What I would put in in an eventual reference would be whatever discussed us with people and if you or anyone else think it reasonable to just salvage this bug then this package then just go ahead with the rest mm. of the pr procedures that might that might be one month delay uh, yeah. uh, announced on Debian devil and i mean not codifying what's what uh, leads to this situation might be just mm. sane enough if we have the rest of the procedure uh, reasonably written down i think sure right absolutely and it's it's important that if we we don't have to say why somebody wants to salvage the package. All we have to say is the existing maintainer is not resisting. And that will avoid us getting to the situation where people claim to be salvaging something, but actually they want to hijack it. Correct. So, okay, we have a salvaging process. When the maintainer does argue, because there are some who will always, and then it becomes a hijack, what do we do then? Do we let an existing maintainer essentially poison the well and, and make sure that the package is never going to be effectively maintained? Or at what point do we overrule them? I mean, do we just at that point bounce it straight to the tech committee before we have the flame war? I have been trying to persuade my colleagues on the technical committee that this is something that we should be doing. Um, they're, I think, not all entirely convinced that they, A, want to do it, or and B, could do it. Um, one of the GRs that we are proposing is to make it clearer that the technical committee should be allowed to have private conversations with people who are raising an issue. And that will make it, hopefully, a lot easier. You will be able to go to the technical committee and say, well, I sent a salvage request for this package, but the maintainer objected, and actually, look, it's not really maintained at all, you know, what do you advise? Can you help? And then the technical committee might look at the bugs and might email the maintainer and have a conversation with the maintainer, and hopefully it will, either the problem will be sorted out, or the technical committee will become convinced that the hijack was actually necessary in some kind of marvelous ideal world. Okay, cool. I think we have answers. Do we have any more opinions? Any more questions? IRC? I guess not. I would like to say thank you, Ian, for coming up with salvaging, which is something I've not... Oh, so it was you. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Phil, sorry. we're very, very sorry. We've stolen all your ideas and even filed your name off. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies. Yes, Ian corrected me and I assumed it was his. Phil? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> so, yes, thank you to Phil for coming up with salvaging. It is a, it's a very descriptive, useful term. Um, and so, yes, I think we have reasonable guidelines. If you think something needs salvaging, say so, and describe it as salvaging in, in your mail to Debian Devel and CCing. Ideally, the team maintainers, the maintainers individually, any uploaders, and let them respond. If there is a real argument and people really don't want to either fix the bugs that they've been neglecting or let you take it over, that's the point to take it straight to the tech committee and we'll keep them busy.
Um, and now that they're having monthly IRC meetings, that, you know, hopefully a lot of this should happen more rapidly. Because again, um, a month is a reasonable time period, I think. Okay, thank you everybody for coming. <laughs>